In today's video, we're going to make some inorganic complexes. Potassium is also pyrodite dihydroxocuprate in aqueous solution. The chemistry of copper is mostly confined to plus 2 oxidation state and plus 1 oxidation state. In this experiment, the metal is brought into plus 3 oxidation state in a stable complexes, which exists in aqueous solution at high pH. This plus 3 oxidation state of copper is remarkable because it's completely stable in aqueous solution. In this video, I'm going to make this compound from elemental iodine to iodate, then convert it to periodate, then finally combine with copper to form target complex. In terms of chemicals, there are only few chemicals needed. For making potassium iodate, we have elemental iodine, potassium chloride, nitric acid, potassium hydroxide, then for periodate, we have potassium iodate, which is made from a last step, potassium hydroxide and potassium persulfate. Then for the final carbon 3 complex, there are potassium periodate, potassium hydroxide, potassium persulfate, and carbon sulfate pentahydrate. First, dissolve 62 grams of potassium chloride in roughly 200 milliliters of warm water. Then 1 milliliters of nitric acid is added using a pipette. After that, 72 grams of elemental iodine is poured into the reaction flask. Immediately, the reaction starts to take place as the color of iodine dissolves into the water. Apart from that, there are some gas generated on the surface of iodine, creating this bizarre emotion. If the reaction gets too vigorous, so that iodine vapor starts to escape from the flask, submerge the flask into tap water to control it. This reaction works because chemical affinity of halogen for hydrogen or positive elements decreases in passing from fluorine to iodine, but the affinity for oxygen increases in this order, so that iodate and iodic acid are more stable than chloride and chloric acid, so the reaction is fairly close to this equation. However, the reaction is more complicated than this. The presence of small amount of acid is necessary to make it take place. This acid gives rise to little free chloric acid, which is far stronger oxidizing agent than potassium chloride, and oxidizes iodine to iodic acid. The later acid reacts with potassium chloride, and thus chloric acid is regenerated. It will be noticed when carrying out this procedure, more iodine is taken than necessary to react with all the potassium chloride according to a reaction given above. This excess iodine is oxidized to iodic acid by part of a free chlorine, which is represented in the reaction as escaping. As the iodic acid is generated, solution becomes acidic, and it needs to be neutralized with potassium hydroxide. I'm adding the hydroxide solution dropwise until it reaches pH 9. Then the solution is allowed to cool and vacuum filtered it, finally dried in an oven. The yield is 111 grams, corresponding to 47% based on iodine. Probably lots of iodine still in the solution as iodate or iodide, so it might be worthwhile to recycle the leftover solution. The next step is convert iodate to periodate. Normally, this is done by bubbling chlorine gas but it is not only toxic but also hard to control. So I'm taking another approach, using potassium persulfate as oxidizer. First, 33 grams of potassium iodide is dissolved in about 100 ml of water. Now everything was dissolved but this is fine. Then, 30 grams of potassium hydroxide is dissolved in about 100 ml of water and this solution is added to the beaker. After that, solution is heated until boil and then, 46 grams of potassium persulfate is added into the boiling solution. 30 grams of potassium hydroxide is dissolved in minimum amount of water, then is poured into the beaker. The reaction immediately taking place and is quite violent, with lots of bubble being produced. These bubbles is probably made of water vapor and oxygen gas, so be sure to use a beaker that is large enough to contain this reaction. The beaker is further heated for 30 minutes. Then 300 ml of hot water is added to the beaker to dissolve all the potassium sulfate byproducts, and is allowed to cool to room temperature. I acidify the solution with nitric acid. This causes also periodate compound to decompose to metaperiodate. 
and because metaperiodate is not very soluble in water, it crashes out of solution. Once chilled in an ice bath, the periodate is filtered and dried. The yield is 26 grams, corresponding to 74% based on iodate. Finally, we are going to make our target carbon-3 species. First, 1 gram of crystal carbon sulfate pentahydrate is dissolved in about 50 ml of water. Then, 5 grams of potassium periodate is added. Immediately, the solution turns into light green, and light yellow precipitate start to form. After that, 5 grams of potassium hydroxide is added as a solution. Upon addition, the content of beaker turns into a deep blue color. Last chemical, which is 5 grams of potassium persulfate, is added, and the heat is turned on. Solution starts to take on a green color, then as the temperature rises, the color transits into a dark red-yellow color. Solution is kept boiling for 30 minutes, then is allowed to cool to room temperature, then chilled in an ice bath. Some dark red-brown color crystal is obtained from the bottom of the beaker. These crystals are filtered, washed with some ice-cold water and dried. This yields 3.7 grams of crystal, which corresponds to 139% yield. This suggested that this is probably in a hydrate form. To demonstrate that this is indeed a carbon 3 species, small amount of crystal is dissolved in water, and sodium metabisulfate is added, and colors fade away instantly, indicating this is a copper in a higher oxidation state. That brings to the end of this video, and here is a good place to end the video.